So here Jesus handpicked the first four disciples. He was walking by the uh, Sea of Galilee, by the Lake of Galilee, and he specifically picked these four disciples. What got my attention that he uh, was very specific with his words. He said, follow me, I will make you fishers of men. Something that they understood. And what this had to do with new beginnings. They have a lot to do. They were called, uh, uh, they, they were, the rest were done. Uh, they went back and whatever when they, they were not picked. Um, and the reason I say all this is because Peter, Andrew, James, and John, they were what? They were fishermen, right? That means that at some point in their life, they weren't good enough. And what I say they weren't good enough, I don't mean they weren't good enough as, as people. I do not mean they weren't good enough as, as persons. I mean they weren't good enough to move to the next step, to move to the next level as rabbis or to move to the next level of their studies. At some point, they had to go back home because they didn't make the cut. They were saying, you know what? I'm sorry. You're not bright enough. Go back to your family. And at some point, they were rejected. Who? Some of you are feeling rejected right now because somebody told you that you don't meet the standards. Somebody told you that you're not good enough. Somebody told you that you won't call. Somebody told you that, that, that God didn't want nothing with you. Someone told you that you're just going to do this and settle that. That you dream to be a doctor is not good enough. Because you don't meet your family standards or, the, the, or you want to be uh, an actor or whatever it is that you want to do. And they said, oh, no, that's not good enough for you. That's, that's not good enough for this family. You're going to do what we told you. That's not good enough. And they have put that in your head and you feel what? I can do what I, my dream. I can do the vision that God gave me. I can do the things that God has put in my heart because I'm not good enough. And you feel not qualified. You feel down. You feel like this is all I can do. And then you feel rejected. You feel that they have turned you down. And you go to a place and you have a dream job and they say, no, you're not good enough for this position. And you feel, oh, man, what am I going to do? I can't help but to believe and think about how often there's people out there that have been pulling down and they have put a neck, a net over you to trap it, trap it down like a fish. You know how they throw the net in the water and the net just pick up all the, the fish? How they have put you in that net and just trap you down to and, and put you in that net just in that confinement that you don't have no way out, nowhere to go. And you feel like a fish in the water or you feel like a fish in the net where not able to move freely. Because they have put you so much restraint in your life. Ooh, your meal. And I believe, and I, I just think that this man were having this thought. I, I, I can't imagine then, and this is just me, and this is not what, what the Word of God says, but I, I imagine in this man fishing every single morning at 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning, throwing the net and thinking, man, this is where I'm stuck. This is, this is what I'm going to do the rest of my life. Man, this is a dirty job. This is, this is like this smell of fish. It doesn't smell. If you've never been fishing, the, it's the smell of fish, it's not the greatest smell. And this man in their head, is, they're thinking like, Ugh, I got to be here the rest of my life. And they probably were thinking, why the what if? What if it was if I was picked? What if if I was chosen? If only I had another chance. If I had another chance to be someone's disciple. 
If I had another chance to, 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 to study, if I had another chance, if I had a new shot, if I had a new opportunity to do the things that I love. So here come this young rabbi. Here come this young rabbi named Jesus. Whoo. And the chance that they probably were thinking about just came right there without them looking for it. Without them forcing things. And that opportunity come along. And the, Jesus said, <laughs> come follow me. Come. <laughs> Simon, Andrew, uh, come. Come follow me. And Jesus called them out. Come follow me. And I will show you how to fish for people. And they dropped the net. That ain't no questions asked. They knew. They knew what was going to happen. They knew what that meant. It's like, there's, this is our chance. And then they went, Jesus went down a little bit more down. And they, he saw James and John. And they were both repairing the boat and repairing their net. And Jesus called them too. Come. Follow me. And they didn't waste no time. Just like, go. How many times have we waste our time when God calls us? How many times have we <laughs> haven't dropped our things and said, God, I'm going to follow you because you say so. I'm going to follow you because you have called me. I'm going to follow you because I hear your call and I know it's you calling me. And because you share what God is saying to you and so other people's opinion getting in the way of what God wants to do in your life. And we hold back. And we said, you know what? I'm not going to move. I'm not sure because so, so, and say, and, and, and Fulana, and, you know, these people are saying all these things about what God is telling you, and you forget about listening to the voice of God. Ooh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And God has presented another chance for your life a new beginning, a new, fresh start. And the only thing that they had to do was one thing, to start. Only one thing they needed to do. The second story that I want to touch here is in, in Mark, and it reads in verse uh, Mark 10, verse 17 and 22. We're going to read that. So Mark 10, verse 17 and 22. They only needed to do one thing. They need to roll out for to start that new beginning. They need to roll out and do one thing. And that was to follow Jesus, to drop everything, to leave everything for Jesus. Are you willing to leave everything for Jesus? Are you willing to live your career for Jesus? Are you willing to drop? <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. Go ahead, read that. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, it reads, As Jesus was starting out on his way to Jerusalem, a man came running up to him, knelt down, and asked, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus asked. Only God is truly good. But to answer your question, you know the commandments. You must not murder. You must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely. You must not cheat anyone. Honor your father and mother. Teacher, the man replied, I've obeyed all these commandments since I was young. Looking at the man, Jesus felt genuine love for him. There is still one thing you haven't done, he told him. Go and sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. At this the, men's, the man's face fell, and he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Ooh. 
this story is commonly uh, called the story of the uh, rich young ruler. This man had everything. And he was, he followed the commandments. He followed everything that he needed to do. He was a good man. But he wasn't willing to depart from what he had. And, and, and here, and don't misunderstand me, here we're not talking about money. We're not talking about uh, what your riches. We're not talking about that. What we're talking about, why are you willing to give up to follow the kingdom of God? Why are you willing to give up for Jesus? Because there's things that we have in our life. There's things that are holding us down, and we don't want to let go to start a new beginning, to begin a new life, to begin a new thing with God. We don't want to give up. I remember when I, I, I remember when Jesus was calling me. I remember when God was calling me. I remember when God said, you need to move from this place to this place. I was like, no. I was like, I don't want to. And for months, for months, I was holding back. And God constantly was speaking to me I, I, to the point I said, well, I got to go. I, I got to go. I got to do what God is telling me. I got to do what God is saying. And God already has spoken to my wife and me like a hard-headed that I am. Sometimes, you know, I don't want to listen to my wife when she speak a prophetic word and it's right on point. And I just be like, yeah. And I had to say sorry. Sometimes we don't want to listen. And God is always speaking. God is always giving a word. And how many times God has said, you need to move. And we ignore the word of God. We ignore his voice. Because we are too comfortable where we at. I'm pretty sure this rich boy this rich young man was very comfortable where he was. He was rich. Rich is synonymous of comfort. And we have a different situation than the early story with the four disciples. You see the difference here because these four disciples, they weren't comfortable. They were working hard. And the work stink. It wasn't too comfortable. They drop everything that they have. But this young man seemed to have it all. But he wasn't willing to let it go. He was rich. He was a kind person. He had all kinds of possession. He had all kinds of money. But something wasn't satis satisfying him. Obviously, that's why he came to Jesus. There was something that was not satisfying. Because we think that we can have all these things in the world. We can have money, riches, and all these things. And that's going to bring comfort. But that's not going to bring satisfaction. You always going to have an emptiness if you don't have Jesus in your heart. Hallelujah. He was still searching for something. He was still searching for something. What are you searching for? Why you feel empty? Why you feel like everything that you try is not enough? Why you feel that there is no satisfaction on the things that you do? And you try something and at that moment you think it's satisfying. But the next day you feel empty. Empty.